Happy Thursday morning, everybody out there in uh, podcast land and uh, watching us on YouTube. Drinking champagne. We are back. Well, uh, we're sort of back. We're on the wrong lead right now. This is where you can boo me. Yeah, where's the boo button? Oh, For those of you who are listening out there on uh, on your podcast provider of choice, the background for our show is usually ah, drinking champagne. Goodness. But if you look down on the bottom watching the YouTube uh, channel, it's still at on the wrong lead, which you know what, that's fine. And now we've got it switched. So, you know, I've, I've done my part. I've done my good deed for the day. And now I can go home. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I... The last couple of weeks on Thursdays, I've been joining kind of late or I've had internet issues. And so I've had Mark, you know, reset everything up. Uh, he tends to get we, a little... You uh, blame Mark for this? Okay. Well, I just, I completely forget to do this, to change it, flip it over all the time. Uh, but uh, yeah, and he gets very, uh, it's funny, like when we do our streams, uh, occasionally you might you might see it happen every once in a while where you'll see like... Something flash on the screen, flash off, or something happen, and it's usually Mark just pressing buttons. Uh, since uh, since I gave him admin rights, he just likes to press buttons. He's I, I drunk know. with power, huh? Yes, he is very much drunk with power. Uh, he's a, he. You gotta don't put a suit on that guy. He's gonna start, you know, firing people and doing who knows what. So, but uh, yeah, drank champagne. Uh, I thought uh, I thought we'd have a little fun this week again, Andrew. Um, and uh, well, you know, you are one of the. Uh, Lucky people to be able to fill out an eclipse ballot. You are part of the uh, the horse racing media. I know that there was a there was a Twitter post. Whether earlier. anybody likes it or not, yes, I am part of the horse racing <laughs> hey. media. And if you don't like it, suck it. <laughs> hey, there are some people who claim to be horse racing media that are definitely not. So yeah. you know, it goes, <laughs> it goes both At ways. At least I'm def- authentic. <laughs> I def- oh man, I wouldn't. I would never claim to be Baffert. Um, no, I'll boot myself. Oh! Thank, you. Thank you. I should have said like looking at. Uh, I don't know. I couldn't even think of another Baffert horse. It's okay. Uh, game We're winner. Recording this fairly late on a Wednesday night. It's all right. <laughs> Wednesdays are long days. It's okay. You know what's funny is that at work, actually, for me, Thursday. I don't know what it is. I I think it's just everybody's desire to try to get as much in before the end of the week so no one wants to schedule no one wants to schedule a meeting on a friday unless they absolutely need to but third so instead they schedule it on thursday and i usually have meetings from about nine in the morning till about 4 30 p.m basically straight with meetings every thursday it's just how it works out it's just i i don't know i i it, maybe it's just academia, you know, the fact that you know I work at a university and and that's just how it works out. But it, it's really funny. We always, I always Thursday is always a super meeting heavy heavy week for me. So, um, but uh, yeah, today today was a pretty good day. Um, it's been kind of weird. Uh, you know, I, I think we talked about in stream. I normally get a week off between Christmas and New Year's uh, with this uh, this job. So I was off all last week. Um, I came back on Tuesday, and it's just. First of all, it goes by so fast, and then second of all, it's just like you are not prepared to come back. Um, it's even like it's even it's a lot different than even like a, just like a vacation, like going somewhere because you know you got the flight back, like you're like mentally preparing yourself, you know, to go go back to work. Whereas it was like eleven thirty p.m. and Caleb and I uh, and uh, our friend Steve and we were playing you know, League of Legends until eleven thirty p.m. and I'm like, oh, I got I the notification go that you guys were streaming, yeah. Yeah, so something we're going to try. Um, Hello? Bueller? Bueller? Just in case this is still recording, as you can see on that side of the screen, Josh is totally frozen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture of the screen and show him so that that way he knows that it is, in fact, his Internet and not mine. 
Interesting. Everything came now, back. Yeah, your your internet came back. I was just going to text you, and if you watch this recording again, you will see that I tried to talk our listeners through the the break there. But we should probably go back to where we were and make an edit. And you should yeah. probably flip us here. Oh, I'll flip us back. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so people who are watching this on YouTube, uh, unfortunately, you're going to see all that because I'm going to be too lazy to vi- edit the video. You're going to be, uh, oh, come on, man. <laughs> oh, man. Editing the videos, uh, editing the video requires me to download it. Uh, I mean, yeah, we'll see. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll leave it in. Maybe we won't. But, uh, and by we, we mean you because you're the one in charge of editing this. I'm just, you know, looking for something to kibitz about. So, we were talking about going back after a holiday break. Yeah, going back after holiday break. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you had mentioned that you'd saw us go live on Twitch. Um, so on Thursday nights after our streams, generally, uh, myself and Caleb and, you know, whoever else is around, we, we play League of Legends on Thursday nights. Uh, so I think going forward after the stream, we might be, after the handicapping stream, we might be putting on the video game stream. Uh, just, you know, us, we usually just bullshit about horse racing or just, you know, other just ridiculousness and talk about bourbon and stuff like that. But uh, just, you know, just friends hanging out. So we might, uh, might do some of that. Um, I have actually, Andrew... Uh, you inspired me, and I've been meaning to do this, but I haven't had I haven't had the time this week. Um, I think I'm going to download Football Manager uh, and uh, and give it another uh, give it another go. So um, we'll we'll see. I've been I've just been looking for stuff to do. I uh, recently started Hades again, which is a, a fun little little game. That sounds hellish. Uh, a little bit. Um, but uh yeah, Straight I'm not gonna even yeah, no, I'm not gonna even I am not gonna even acknowledge that one. Uh, we're gonna let that one uh just go. But uh yeah, I've I've just been looking for stuff to play and uh football manager is always a good one, so and I think now the new ones run on Mac, so um I'll be able to you know toss it on my laptop as well, so when I'm out and about I can play on my laptop, so yeah, that'll work for sure. Uh, no, football manager is a ton of fun. I'm in my third season of my game, and it's just it's a blast trying to move teams up and down divisions and making moves and such, especially if you have absolutely no idea what you're doing. You can be a real-life Ted Lasso in that game and have some degree of success just being a mad scientist with your guys on the pitch. It's cool. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I have a blast doing it. So, um, But anyways... Let's get let's give the people what they want. They want to. He did it again. He did it again. This time I'm prepared to talk you all through it. He did it again. His video has once again disconnected. There he is. I'm back. Okay. I, do, I don't that know what the heck is quicker. going on. Yeah. I had a very I, long monologue that was going to go in, you know, and out to the airwaves, but I didn't have to go through it. I'll save it for about three or four minutes from now when your video <clears> goes out again. Yeah, I have no idea what's going on. This is very weird. Uh, it, uh, I get like this weird yellow pop up saying, "Hey, there's a problem with your connection." Everything. Well, else then is maybe there's about. a problem with your connection, Josh. Yeah, maybe. Um, anyways, here we go. We got your uh, your ballot up here um, for people on the video podcast. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to go. I'm just going to walk through it, or you know, I'll let you walk through it. Um, you know, tell the people, walk you through your ballot, just so that way people listening on the podcast, they'll, they'll hear it. And then we're going to touch on a couple things, uh, a couple questions I had for you, a couple things I wanted to talk through. So, Sure. All right. Here we go. So I'll go through some of these category by category. Some of these were layups, to be honest, and I'm not going to spend too much time on them. Flight line is horse of the year. It's not exactly anybody's idea of preferable that the horse of the year only ran three times, but let's be honest, Flightline was far and away the best horse we saw all year, so Flightline is horse of the year. Forte is champion two-year-old male. Wonder Wheel, champion two-year-old filly. Three-year-old male, I imagine, is one of the questions Josh has for me. I went Epicenter, Modern Games, and Taba. 
three-year-old Philly, Nest on top of Secret Oath and Tuesday. Nest ought to be unanimous in this particular category. Flightline, champion older dirt male. Again, sort of gone through it already. Malafat, champion older dirt female. After completing what is a sneaky Hall of Fame resume with a win in the Breeders' Cup distaff. I put Jackie's Warrior on top in the male sprinter category. Not a good year for America's sprinters. Female sprinter, Good Night Olive, undefeated on the season, ended it with a win in the Philly and Mare Sprint. Male turf horse, how slow are our male turf horses here in America? Modern Games and Rebels Romance 1-2 put Golden Pal third, but there's a really fun trivia question that we're going to get to in this category. If you follow me on Twitter, you might have seen it a couple of weeks ago. For female turf horse, it's the two Peter Brandt, Chad Brown horses, Regal Glory and an Italian. Either of them would be very deserving. I put Regal Glory on top solely because she faced males. That matters to me. Steeplechase horse, I abstain from the category this year. I have voted in past years. It's a simple case where there's no clear-cut winner in that particular category. You may think it's laziness. It's not. I am readily acknowledging I do not know nearly enough about steeplechase racing in order to decide between these three horses. I'm going to let smarter people do that, and I'm going to put more stock into their opinions rather than put potentially a fly in the ointment. For champion order, I went with Peter Brandt. For breeder, I went with Stone Street. I put a Rod Ortiz Jr. first in jockey, and he's going to win running away given the year that he had numbers-wise. As far as conduct goes, some of the blame doesn't go to him. Some of it goes to the stewards for allowing some of the things that he does without policing it. So take that for what you will. For apprentice jockey, I went with Jose Gomez. He had a nice year on the New York circuit and also won a lot down at Parks. He's riding a lot, folks, and you're going to see his name a lot moving forward. And for trainer, I went with Todd Pletcher for a variety of reasons. He had another outstanding year, as did Bill Mott and Shirley Appleby second and third. So that's my Eclipse Award ballot. Uh, again, some of these were layups, slam dunks, whatever you want to call them. Others, a little bit of a debate. Three-year-old male, of course, got all the play over on Horse Racing Twitter. Uh, as I've mentioned a couple of times, Epicenter's been the horse on top there ever since his winning the Travers. Breeders' Cup Classic and the subsequent races changed absolutely nothing for me. Yeah, it's interesting with, uh, well, first of all, let, let's back up and talk about just your ballot. Um, I uh, I talked with uh, Caleb and Mark, and I was like, yeah, this is what we're going to do uh, you know, for the podcast. And uh, Caleb was like, we're very close. And I looked at it, and I'm like, yeah, I would say that we are very close as well. Um, so there wasn't a whole lot in here that was just ridiculous. It was no Ed DeRosa. Let's just say that. I'm not touching uh, that one with a 10 foot pole, Josh. I'm just saying, all right. The man's love for Mountain Dew has just gone too far. So <laughs> apparently it's done something else, but, uh, I love Ed, but, uh, yeah. Um, I, I understand where he's coming from, but, uh, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll just leave it at that. Um, Horse of the year, I mean, obviously, I think, you know, you kind of said it is clear. I mean, it's flight line. Um, second and third, I I don't know if it really matters that much, to be honest with you. But um, I did see somebody kind of give a little hat tip to you for putting Malathot in third because they were like, oh, I would have never thought of that. Um, I think uh, maybe I saw some people maybe give uh, – was it modern games maybe a look as well or or maybe Taiba as well um but um yeah i, I thought horse i i'm honestly with these awards i'm mostly only con interested in first i mean yep now the one horse i will say that i thought about putting in third before i realized no malathat's resume is superior if the baseline for horse of the year this year is three grade one wins and it is it was a rough year as far as grade one wins were concerned without many standouts as far as numbers. Forte won three grade ones going from seven furlongs to a mile and a 16th. But ultimately, you look at Malafat's resume, three grade one wins, a head away from a fourth in the Ogden Phipps, never fired an overwhelmingly bad shot and showed up when all the chips were down. Needed to throw at least a little bit of love her way in addition to flight line and life is good in the one and two spots. Yeah, and I thought uh, with the two-year-olds, I thought it was pretty clear-cut as well yeah. with Forte oh, yeah. and Wonder Wheel. I didn't, 
you know, I honestly, Wonder Wheel was a horse I tried to hate so much and bet against. And, and look at okay, before um, before Mister uh, uh, Press Box, uh, I forget what his name is, uh, but before he gets on me for being against horses, um, you know, I just tried to beat. I tried to beat Wonder Wheel. So I was never impressed with Wonder Wheel. I tried to beat her so much, and she just kept showing up and just making me lose money. So uh, <laughs> hat tip there. Um, Three-year-old male is probably where this discussion gets interesting. And I will say that I think I have it exactly the same way that you do. Um, And I think the interesting part about three-year-old male, and actually all of these awards, right? And I know it's, I know you're supposed to consider the entire year. But, I mean, come on. Once the Breeders' Cup's over, does anything really matter? Like, okay, yes, the Malibu, like, great. Taiba won the Malibu on December 26th. I mean, who cares? Yeah, it's a grade one. It's a nice race. There was a, It was a really competitive race. But it's like once the Breeders' Cup's over, like, I don't know, like, you have the Clark, you have the, uh, what's the Aqueduct one? The Cigar Mile. The Cigar Mile, You yeah. get the Malibu, and it's just kind of like, I don't know, I they end up as grade ones or they are grade ones and um but i don't know it's just they they don't hold the same weight as any as kind of like the end of the season when when the breeders cup kind of hits i know horse racing never stops right but um i don't know uh, i that kind of i think if you include the malibu win from taiba okay i i get the um the argument for for maybe taiba as as the winner here but I mean, Epicenter won the big races, you know, didn't win the Derby, but won the Travers, you know, won those preps. I I mean, he he did everything he could, I think. And I thought I think he's a deserving three year old male. I honestly I think if, if somebody had any of these three as their top pick, I would respect it. And I wouldn't uh be like that's absolutely crazy. But I for me, I agree with you. I think Epicenter's the one. So you mentioned the Malibu and how that's a grade one. They downgraded some races a couple of weeks ago, and a number of friends of mine in the turf riding contingent were really pissed off, and rightfully so, that the Woodward was downgraded to a grade two. If you're downgrading the Woodward, why is the Malibu a grade one? Why is the La Brea a grade one? And why in the world is the American Oaks a grade one? No race restricted to three-year-olds after mid-October should be a grade one race. You want to make it a grade two? That's fine. The Malibu at one point was a very big race on the Santa Anita calendar because it was the start of a series of races that led up to the Santa Anita handicap in March. You had the Malibu, you had the Stroob, you had one or two other races in there back when horses ran every two or three weeks like clockwork, all leading up to the Santa Anita handicap in March, and that was the flagship race of the meet. That's not the case anymore. The Santa Anita handicap once one of the biggest races in the country now is just another grade one on the calendar because of where it falls on said calendar and losing horses to races like the Saudi cup and the Dubai world cup that offer way, way, way more money. That's why it was a grade one. Why should it still be a grade one? I don't know. And there's no argument for the La Brea and American Oaks being grade one races. None. The arguments just don't exist anymore. Having said that personally, The people that have been looking to give this award to a horse not named Epicenter confuse me a little bit. Have grade two wins and seconds in grade one races just stopped mattering? Because Epicenter's got a whole bunch of those showed up in every race from start to finish this year. And the only time he didn't show up was when he was pulled up. Epicenter's champion three-year-old male. Most ballots I have seen lean that way. And despite a lot of debate on Twitter, I think Epicenter is going to win this pretty convincingly. It reminds me a little bit, Josh, of when Justify was retired after the Belmont going six for six, winning the Triple Crown. And there was noise made by certain people on Twitter that Accelerate, who won the Breeders' Cup Classic, should be Horse of the Year. No, that's not the way it works. Yeah, um, and I really think that the... Santa Anita handicap, the big cap, 
should have probably been downgraded after combatant one. <laughs> so I've actually got an idea for how they can potentially revive the Santa Anita handicap and the Hollywood Gold Cup. Here's what I do. You back them up. You back the Santa Anita handicap up to Memorial Day. Okay. So we're into late May. You run the Hollywood Gold Cup 4th of July weekend. And Josh, what's about six weeks after 4th of July weekend? You go down the California coast a little bit. Uh, you go down to where the turf meets the surf. Pacific this 10 for long race, the Pacific Classic. You turn that into a legitimate 10 for long series where horses come back and run in all three races. And you know what? Santa Anita and Del Mar have worked together in the past. You put together a bonus for a horse that wins all three. It doesn't have to be a ton, but horses would show up. And you'd also potentially, maybe, get horses coming back from the Saudi Cup or Dubai World Cup, Saudi Cup more likely because that's in February. And maybe they're not ready in time yet for the big cap, but they're certainly ready in time for the other two grade ones in the series. I think that's the most efficient way to do that. I know it stinks having to change all of these great races, but that's the environment we live in. And if you don't do that, then the Santa Anita handicap just doesn't mean nearly as much as it used to. Josh, I was there for the big showdown between Game On Dude, Mucho Macho Man, and We'll Take Charge. The year after Mucho Macho Man and We'll Take Charge were in that photo in the classic, and Game On Dude ran both of them off their feet, went in 157 and change, I think, for a mile and a quarter, freakishly fast. That's what the big cap is supposed to be. It's not that anymore. Well, we just don't have those horses anymore. Well, we've got the horses. It's just they're in Saudi Arabia and Dubai running for way more money. Um, moving on. Three-year-old Philly slam dunk should be unanimous. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I, and I think Secret Oath is is a clear number two. Um, you know, ran ran all the races. Uh, kind of you know fell short. In uh, in later part of the campaign, but uh, you know had had a heck of a start to the to the year. So, um, and then uh, older dirt male, obviously, um, and older dirt female. I don't really think that there's much much to talk about. Malathot had just an amazing amazing campaign, and I think you already kind of touched on that when you were talking about um, her being your third choice for horse of the year there. Um, I, I think where this starts to get a little bit more interesting is when we get to uh, male sprinter. Uh, There's Jackie's, no good options here. Yeah, Jackie's Warrior, um, this is kind of – this is another place where I kind of agree with you, or where I do agree with you, rather. But I do see how other people may see it differently uh, with elite power as as possibly being as being the the champion male sprinter um and yeah i mean if jackie's warrior you know shows up obviously in the breeders cup sprint which uh he has never done for some odd reason uh we uh th this isn't a conversation but uh yeah I, I think that that race just left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths and they have a hard time uh selecting jackie's warrior as a champion sprinter after that Point of order on that, though, we talk about Jackie's Warrior and how Jackie's Warrior tailed off at the end of the season. He ran second in one grade one, and for as much as we knock his effort in the Breeders' Cup Sprint, he was third that day. I, I can't overly penalize that. If he's off the board in that race, maybe. But you have a horse that ran some really big races earlier in the year. And I don't know whether he tailed off or whether horses like Elite Power got better. I also don't know what we're supposed to do as Eclipse voters. And this isn't a complaint. It's an honest-to-goodness question. Josh, how are we supposed to consider the dirt mile? Are we supposed to consider that a sprint when it's a two-turn race at some racetracks in the Breeders' Cup rotation? In fact, almost all of them. I understand we're not supposed to consider it, you know, a classic type race, mile and eighth, mile and quarter, whatever. But this is one of those things where you're going, okay, so if it's not quite a sprint, but the winner of the four go won it, what do you do? I put Cody's wish third. Uh, elite power 
definitely deserved at least a top three mention. You talk about races that have seen better days. The grade two Vosberg, oof. Won hmm. that, won the Breeders' Cup sprint. Good horse. Hopefully we'll see more out of him next year. I haven't heard, I don't think he's retiring. I think he's still staying around. So if he's able to stay around and build on the foundation he laid at the end of the year, more, no pun intended, power to him. Yeah, I'm actually just looking something up real quick here. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, Jackie's Warrior started off obviously winning the Count Fleet. He won um, four in a row. Yeah, won the Churchill Downs, won the True North, won the uh, Vanderbilt, and ran second in the forego to Cody's Wish, and then third, like you said, in the Breeders' Cup. Um, and you know, it's just it's just hard. Like he ran. He ran in so many more races than some of these other horses. I mean, Elite Power, you know, ran what six times this year, but you know, twice in maiden special weights and allowance, two allowance races, and then shows up in the Vosberg, wins, and then wins the Breeders' Cup sprint. It's just not as there's not as much of a of a breadth of a uh, resume there as yeah. I think there is with Jackie's War. And like I said. If somebody, that's my criteria, right? That's where how I'm looking at it. Once again, I'm not part of the media, but like if I were, that is how I would look at it, right? Um, and part of it is, you know, much to um, Mr. DeRosa's grandstanding, um, <laughs> is that he's right that we, I think we should reward horses that run all the races. And Jackie's Warrior ran all the races. And you got a second and a third in the, in the grade one and one four in a row. I mean, that, that seems like your winner. So the one caveat to that, and I have seen this on Twitter and it's not without some validity. I know there are voters wishing Jackie's warrior would have run in the Met mile as opposed to being odds on in a sprint race elsewhere on the weekend. I don't blame the horse or the connections for not doing that. Are you supposed to sacrifice this horse to flight line midway through the season and wind up with a speaker's corner that never really bounced back? They did right by their horse. I can't penalize the horse for that. Would it have been nice to see flight line and Jackie's warrior go head to head for the first half mile? Sure. But blame the people scheduling the stakes races for providing all of these options at specialty distances. Don't blame the connections for taking them. <clears throat> yeah, and you had kind of mentioned too with um, the the dirt mile. Um, I, I don't care who you are, a mile is a route. So it, even if it's a one turn mile, I will still. It's an long. Yeah, people call it an elongated sprint, and horses that get seven furlongs get the eight for the eight furlong fine. But you got to have a cutoff at some point, and I feel like a mile is a place where you cut that off. So. Um. Moving on, I think uh, Good Night Olive, uh, you know, undefeated season. I think that that was another basically slam dunk. Um, I'm not sure what Echo's, Echo Zulu's future is. is. Is she sticking around? I'm not um, entirely sure either, but it, it got a little bit slim after Good Night Olive. The other horse that I considered putting in here was Caravel, the upset winner of the Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint, where if you were like me, you were singled to Golden Pal and absolutely everything, and the race was over right as it started, but ultimately decided to go with Echo Zulu and CC second and third. Yeah, it... Um, I... I rad Ortiz was very visibly upset. We were actually, in, <laughs> we were sitting, uh, uh, by the, um, the jockeys room. And so all after every race, all the jockeys walked past us and he was, um, yeah, he was, he was not happy. Uh, yeah. If go if golden pal wins that particular race, he might be champion male turf force this year, but alas, not to be. Yeah, you have uh, you have modern games here. Um, yeah, and so here's a trivia question, and I want to pose this. If you've seen this on Twitter, stay quiet for a little bit. But the trivia question is: there were three horses in the packet that the Daily Racing form sent out to voters with past performances throughout the year of top contenders. Three American turf horses won two Grade Ones. 
Can you name them? Is Golden Pal one of them? No, Golden Pal won zero grade one races. Um, it's oh, tough, man. isn't it? Was it Colonel Liam? Nope. That was last year, wasn't it? Oh, man. This is tough. You might get two of them. The third one is really tough. And so male turf horses. Older male turf horses. Older male turf horses. And are these all routers? No. Huh. Uh, Casa Creed? One. Um... Man. Here's a hint. Churf counts. Churf counts. So who oh there's that that horse I hate. Um well that really narrows it down. He he ran well. It was uh man. I can't remember. I this is gonna take forever. Santon is that one. That's Santon, the horse that's that the horse I both, hate. Yeah. Yeah, he won both the race before the Derby and the Arlington Million. That's two. Those are the obvious ones. He won the Arlington Million? Track Man, record what time. What a freaking year. I the already forgot third, about that. The third was Count Again, who did not run after the spring and won two grade ones at Santa Anita. Very, very slow turf horses this year. And you wind up with people after the Euros come over and kick our butts, wondering, my goodness, how come we don't have any turf horses? How come we don't have any turf horses? Those same people are the ones marveling at two-year-olds breezing an eighth of a mile and nine and change on the dirt and spending seven figures on them. What did you think was going to happen? We're breeding horses for whatever the heck brilliance is, not to go eight furlongs or 12 furlongs on turf when they're four, five, or six. And when you get horses that buck that trend, they buck that trend for a reason. Wise Dan was an absolute freak. You get horses like Main Sequence who get really good for a short time. Bricks and Mortar was the same way. They're the exception. They are not the rule. And if something doesn't change soon, the Euros are going to keep sending their second and third stringers over and just crushing our turf horses every November. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I see no problem with, uh, modern games who also won two grade ones. Uh, yes, but one and, of them uh, was in Canada. So what you, you're given bonus for international. I mean, the Woodbine no, mile is a very, I'm very, is the trivia question with those three modern games. Wasn't an answer because one of the grade one wins was in Canada. Oh, I thought it was American horses only that you were talking well, about. Yeah, that I, gotcha. it was just easier that way. But yeah, that's what I had to spell out in a tweet because I wanted to make sure nobody was going to try to be a smart ass and say that, you know, we had suddenly conquered Ontario. Yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, it's, um, yeah, I, I have no problems here. Uh, I mean, honestly, after Modern Games, you could have just named whoever, and I would have been like, "Yeah, sure." Yeah, you could have you could have put Casa Creed in there. I would have been like, "Yeah." Some why people not? did. Um, female turf horse, I think, is another place where we get uh, may, we, maybe we have a little bit of a discussion here. Uh, you what have Regal- horse's name would you like on your trophy, Mister Brant? He's got them both. You can you can't yeah. go wrong with either. I just went with Regal Glory because she faced males, and that matters. Yeah, I, I could see that, and I think Regal Glory won an additional, what one three grade ones. This Sounds year? about right. Yeah, and she, I think uh, I think uh, she in won Italian, the Italian Matriarch won late in the year and did so very impressively. Yeah. Yeah, and I think in Italian won what the Diana and the First won, Lady, right? Yeah. Yes, and was second in the Philly and Mare Turf. Chad Brown said he was not a fan of the ride that day. I personally love the ride. That horse is not going to win unless she goes very fast early and grinds her rivals into dust. Problem is, again, sometimes the European turf horses are just a little better at that game than we are. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I see you have, uh, you have, uh, warlike goddess as third. Um, another one who went up against males. Yep. On the uh, but, uh, but finished uh, finished third there in the uh, the Breeders' Cup. Oh, and won the the Joe Hirsch. Yeah, yeah, won the Hirsch. Yeah, that's what won I'm the saying. Hirsch. Yeah. Yep, and uh, and 
came us uh, third in the uh, Breeders' Cup turf there. So yep. um, another one, uh, I, I think, I like once again, I think this might be one that I wouldn't really, I wouldn't argue too much, but I, I do, I kind of, I agree with you. I think, I think it is Regal Glory by the slimmest of margins. Um, but Regal Glory in Italian, I think, I, I think you got the order right. We'll we'll pat you know kudos to you. We'll go ahead. We will uh we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll clap a little bit. I, I think it's right. Uh, p- other people might uh might think it's it's wrong there, but um, people thinking I'm wrong. Shocker, Josh. Shocker. Dude, I'm just saying that you uh, there nobody else's uh ballot is gonna be, even get like looked at a third time after the, some of the stuff I've seen on Twitter uh, this week. So, um, steeplechase horse abstain um I, i'm just gonna assume that last year you voted for the mean queen i did yeah yeah that's literally um, the only steeplechase horse i can name so uh the fact that she's not on here uh either tells me she's retired or uh she didn't run well this year she got hurt uh, she was on the mm. sidelines for quite a while i don't know if she got hurt or not but she was on the sidelines for quite a while uh but yeah that was uh by the way I didn't get cheated out of much at Saratoga in the summer of 2021. I should have had 143 top pick winners, however, because I had the mean queen the day she went insane in the final furlong and darted all over and dumped the jockey. So that's the one thing you always remember, right? But I specified this earlier with regard to steeplechase horse. I'm not an annual abstainer. If there is an obvious choice to be made, I will happily make it this particular year. There were three contenders for that award, primarily. Snap Decision put forth one of the greatest performances I have ever seen at Saratoga, period. Any horse, flat horse over jumps, whatever, carried 160-something pounds to victory in a grade one race over fences at Saratoga. Not easy to do, especially when you're giving your rivals 20 pounds apiece. Problem is, it sure seemed like that effort took a lot out of him, and the last two races of the year, he faltered. The other horse, well, the other, the second of the three, rather, was a horse that won the race where Snap Decision ran second by nine lengths, but he only ran twice. The second time he ran was when a third horse beat both of those horses <laughs> by 11 lengths in the Grand National. Josh, I don't know what to do. You can say it's laziness, whatever you want. You're incorrect. In this case, I'm going to defer to the people that know more. I'm going to trust their judgment. And ultimately, I didn't want to put a fly in the ointment. And if you want to butter me up and say I should have cast a vote or whatnot, whatever, that's fine. Just don't say I'm lazy because that's not what the case is. All right. Now we're getting to the uh, the awards that I really don't think matter. But um, Owner, Andrew. If you were to name one of these very, very like expensive and nice horses and ask me who owns it, I would have absolutely no fucking clue. <laughs> so here's the one thing that I will say about both owner and breeder. Godolphin should win both of them. Based on all statistics, their head and shoulders above everything. They've had great years. For reasons that go beyond horse racing, I could not give Godolphin a unanimous Eclipse Award. I gave him third in both categories. I was not going to penalize the people that do fantastic work. You can look it up, and I'll leave it there. Um, but, like, honestly, I have no... Like, I know these names. I know who these people are. I can name certain horses that they do own. But, like, Epicenter... I'm, I'm guessing at Stone Street. Winchell. Oh, see Winchell. It's the other one. Uh, I, yeah, I like I can't even begin to name it. And like, I don't know. It, it's just like one of those things where it's like, unless it's something that is super obvious, right? Like, I don't see a technical or a anything about the uh, a computer or any kind of trading on here. So I know it's not a Clarevich horse. You know, <laughs> like. Uh, if it's not that kind of stuff or, you know, you, you get the weird stuff where like Pizza Bianca is owned by Bobby Flay. And I don't know. I I know these these are important people. 
right? These are important people. They're very important to the industry. They they pour their heart and or their money at least uh, into uh, into the industry. Um, very very grateful for that. However, like I I don't know. It's just not something as as someone who plays the horses um, to to wager. It, it's just not. This is not something I pay attention to. So um, it, it basically, like, honestly, if if I were someone voting in this, uh, I would basically take all of these horses and figure out who owns them and who bred them and whoever tallies up the most points, I think, would get my vote. Well, Stone Street wound up getting my breeder award in large part because they have very close ties to both Malifat and Clarier. So you've basically won every major race for older fillies and mares east of the Mississippi River. Um, But no, as far as owner and breeder go, it's incredibly subjective. And you wind up seeing the standings and you see ownership groups with hundreds of wins at B and C level tracks going up against ownership groups that are listed partnerships with four or five different shareholders in there that clearly own one horse. In this case, the people that own Flightline are all listed together and there's four or five different entities. I voted for Ronus Racing as on their own solely because they had other horses too that wound up accomplishing a fair bit. But having said that, I've got absolutely no problem with the owner and breeder Eclipse Awards. You need to have owners and breeders in this game. Otherwise, you're not going to have horses and you're not going to have races. So totally fine with that. The one stance that I took was the Godolphin one earlier. And I understand there's going to be a lot of people that don't agree with that. That's fine. Ultimately, it's my ballot and I'm the one that's got to sleep with it at night. And honestly, got to tell you, considering that Godolphin is almost certainly going to win both of them, I don't think they care too much what's on my ballot. I, I don't really care too much what's on your ballot. I mean, then why have we spent the last thirty <laughs> minutes discussing my ballot? We should be discussing League of Legends. I have no uh, idea yeah. how to play. No. <laughs> um, jockey, uh, I will say I think you have first place right once again uh, with uh, Arad. Um, I know uh, I. I mean, I have, for as much of a bonehead as he is a lot of times, I have a huge, huge soft spot for Joel Rosario. Mm -hmm. Um, I really think that when he's on top of his game, he is 100% the best jockey out there. The problem is, is that 60% of the time it works every time. So you just don't really know what, when that's going to be sometimes. Um, I have a point of order here, a point of order based on the reference you just made. Can we call Joel Rosario sex Panther from now on? Sure. Okay. I want you to, I want you to pass that along to, to Mark and Caleb. And yeah, that's, we've, we've just officially made policy here on the, on the wrong lead podcast network. Yep. Um, but yeah, I, I'm totally fine with it. I read broke. what, What was the record he broke this year? He had, a whole bunch of grade one wins, grade one wins, I think wins throughout the season. He won, he broke a lot of records. Yeah. Um, apprentice jockey. This is, this is always a, this is always an interesting one. I, um, I can't say that for me this year, any of them really stood out completely. Uh, I think Jose Gomez would probably be the one. Uh, I will say that I did see somebody post uh, Vicente Del Cid's uh, record, and it is something to behold. I mean, that is that man has put in a ton, a ton of work. Um, and, and not knowing him very well, because I think he, he rides at Delta, right? Yeah, he rides down in Louisiana. And again, it's one of those instances where What do you value? Do you value an apprentice that's getting wins against one of the best jockey colonies on the planet? Or do you value somebody that is doing very, very well as a big fish in a little pond, so to speak? And that's nothing against Vicente Del Cid. He's had an outstanding year, especially for an apprentice. But seeing Jose Gomez hold his own in New York, not necessarily riding the best horses because when you're an apprentice you get the third and fourth string from whatever barns you are lucky enough to be working for and riding for he has gotten the most out of some mounts that had no shot 
And with that in mind, I couldn't not vote Jose Gomez up at the top. I think he's got a chance to stick around New York and maybe not be a leading rider in New York, but certainly somebody like, say, a Jose Lizcano type that's always around, wins at about 12, 15% every year, and is one of those guys who, yeah, he's not going to be a first call rider, but a guy that you never feel bad about when he's on your horse, you're not saying, oh God, I can't believe I have Jose Gomez on my horse. I don't think he's going to be that kind of a rider. He's got some potential. So he's not going to be a Jose Lascano is what you're saying. Jose Lascano is a hell of a turf rider. You watch your mouth. I was, uh, I was telling, uh, I, I was actually talking about Jose Lascano earlier today in, uh, in chat. And I believe I said, um, I probably have the power to turn Jose Lascano into a 5% rider because that seems to be about the times he wins when I bet him. So then, everybody's got a rider like that. My rider is actually down in the Texas and Oklahoma circuit. You familiar with Leandro Goncalves at all? Oh, yeah. He's a very good rider. He wins 18 to 20% of the time. They're all when I don't have him. That's so funny. Everybody's um, got a rider like that. That's their boogeyman of sorts. And apparently Jose Lascano is yours. <laughs> the The best part is, is I said that and uh, somebody else commented, one of my other buddies commented and said, oh, well, funny enough, uh, I probably would bet him the other 5% and, and still lose. So he would, uh, he'd be the a 0% rider. So um, I started looking at this week's aqueduct races, just the Thursday and Friday cards. He's on a lot of live horses this week, just so you know. I'm sure he is. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I was going to say I'm, I'm not going to bet it, but I forgot there is a, um, there's a carryover tomorrow. So I will, uh, I will be jumping in on the, uh, the carryover tomorrow for the, uh, the pick five. So that should be, uh, that should be good. Uh, you know who I really like? Yeah. Yeah, you know who I actually you're mentioning Texas. You know who I really like actually is uh, in Texas is uh, Ernesto Valdez Jimenez. I feel like he's a really really good turf rider down there. He he usually uh, he does really well. But uh, yep, we'll we'll see if we ever get to bet it. Doesn't look good. And quick deviation, Texas. What the hell are you doing? I uh, I'm still deciding. But there's about a fifty percent chance that I will be in Houston. You were saying of, that for uh, their NHC thing, yeah. Yeah. So uh, Caleb is going to be in town, and he's going to play in it. So I'm, I'm thinking about it. Um, it'll probably there's co- obviously there's costs with the flight and other stuff involved. So um, and and the buy-in's bigger than I normally play, but. Uh, it might be, we'll, we'll see. I'm playing, I'm playing a contest next week, um, at Hawthorne. So next weekend, Hawthorne has got live money contests again, th- uh, Friday and Saturday. I'm playing both those. Um, Hi, Emily Gullickson. How you doing? Yeah. Oh, Emily, hopefully will be there. And then I know, um, uh, Matthew Bickey who watches us, he will be out there and he's, he's a great guy. We already, we already got dinner planned. So it'll be, uh, it'll be fun time, nice. but, uh, yeah, so we'll see. I mean, I'm hoping that I'll already be qualified and I won't have to worry about it. I've already booked my hotel. I'm going to book my flight once Southwest decides to do the We Fucked Up sale. Um, and then uh, we, uh, yeah, I mean, if not, the the flights have, have come down. They were kind of ridiculous when I first looked a couple months ago. But, uh, yeah, it, it'll be some fun. But, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's round this out here. Trainer, Todd Pletcher. And, um, honestly, like this is another one where I think you got the top one, right. And I really don't care about second and third. Um, I mean, I, I don't know who else you go with besides top Fletcher in the spot. I mean, there's a name that isn't in my top three that might win. Who? This guy who wins every single turf race in New York, the guy that trains. Oh, Chad Peter Brown. Grant. Really? Yeah. I mean, um, I, I, he's going to get a lot of votes. You know, he had a good year. Uh, I, he, I mean, he's on the he's, track. He did. Uh, we're only going to talk about the track um, yep. right now, but uh, he had a great year on the track. Um, he, uh, he's a very, very, very good trainer, um, and I have, I have a ton of respect for his training ability. Um, I just don't 
think he had outside of uh, the the female turf horses, which is always a, a, a forte of his. Um, he just didn't have, I think, that one like really really big horse this year he had and early voting win the preakness but i think people view the preakness and maybe this is how they're viewing it with three-year-old male too i don't think they see early voting as having won the preakness i think they see epicenter having lost it i mean i mean i see that um oh well interesting yeah okay i can see why so chad does lead the the trainers and earnings through yep. the year so yeah, by by about uh, six hundred thousand, it looks like. Yes, yeah, st- stats wise, he fits. Yeah, yeah, and and did it in less starts too. Wow, interesting. Uh, I I honestly that that surprised me. I wouldn't have thought that. I, once again, it's not something. It's not something as a horse player I necessarily track. So, um, but I just think you know Todd Pletcher. Um, I mean, he just had one after another with. Uh, was it life Nest? Is good. Life yeah. is good. Yeah, I mean, you name you name every category. Mo Donegal, Mo Donegal which you know, it sucks what happened to Mo Donegal. Malathat, yeah. Malathat, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's it's tough to look past him. I think I think he just had more, more top 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 horses than uh, than Chad this year. So, and, and I got to tell you, I I the horse of his that I was most excited to cash a ticket on this year was a two-year-old filly by the name of Prank who ran a hole in the wind at Saratoga and unfortunately has not run since. I guess she had a hairline fracture. I believe she's still in training ahead of a three-year-old campaign. So fingers, toes, and eyes crossed. We're in January. We've got enough time. Prank has the potential to be a very, very, very good racehorse. Yeah. Well, this is fun. Andrew, thank you for uh, thank you for humoring me and uh, and talking through uh, talking through your ballot there. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, we used to we did a couple times we did like the awards thing, and then it's just like I don't know. At a certain point, we're like I don't know. We don't really care. I mean, only care, one person, but... only one person, Josh, has ever gotten horse racing awards exactly perfectly right. Shout out Jason Beam. <laughs> uh the beamy awards that was so fun the only problem with the beamy awards josh i never won one that is that is definitely like i saw that sentence coming a mile away and there was nothing i could do to stop it exactly that's my appeal yeah. but no i i had i had a laugh with him once uh on my, a former show that i hosted where i had to that point best summer ever at saratoga crushed everybody and I lost to bet with Kevin. I, I I let Beam have it for that one, and I don't think he was particularly <laughs> interested in hearing my grievance. But on a serious note, if you came to horse racing Twitter late and you don't remember the Beamy Awards and you have no idea what they are, whatever, just know that was a magical day every year that did the impossible. Josh, we see horse racing Twitter be about as fractured as any Twitter subgroup of any niche sport that exists. It brought horse racing Twitter together and it trended on Twitter, not just for horse racing people, for everyone. Enough people were talking about the Beamy Awards that it tripped the Twitter algorithm. And it was Mm -hmm. a top 10 trending topic on Twitter the night of the Beamy Awards in one of the years in the late 2010s it was uh was a heck of a thing and uh it, it that's one of jason's incredible contributions to this game one of the best ambassadors we got yeah i uh i huge fan of his uh his podcast i actually reached out to him once uh asking for some advice and yeah, he responded. He he would always respond to, to yep. emails and stuff. He's a real, real great guy. So met him in person at Golden Gate Fields. Could not have possibly been nicer. Good dude. And he got a lot more tolerant to me once I explained that gimmick Andrew was basically Al Bundy talking about four touchdowns in a single game, except it's X amount of winners at Saratoga. And once he got that, we got along splendidly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to do it for us here on Drank and Champagne. Andrew, once again, thanks again for uh, sharing your ballot with us. Um, we will be uh, live tonight, uh, Thursday night, at uh, 
our usual time, 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern, uh, trying to wrap up this thousand dollar contest here see if uh how does that stand by the way can we get a standings update before we go oh so i think caleb has to rebuy for the third time or yeah third buy-in so he's uh he's in for some more money um and i believe i am at 237 273 dollars and uh mark is at 365 so i fully intended for mark to win last week delta and yeah and I just was like memeing uh, win bets on horses that hurt him, and I just kept hitting, and they just kept hurting him. So uh, we kind of we kind of stood pat there. But I I think I got a good feeling about this this week. So I've been I've been running pretty good. Um, I had uh, I've had some nice a uh, couple nice days at Santa Anita um, and uh, at uh, at parks of all places, but. Um, so I'm feeling good. I'm seeing the ball well. Uh, I I got killed at Turfway tonight, but uh, we'll see if we can turn it around tomorrow. So, um, but uh, yeah, check that out on our YouTube channel. Obviously, we'll be back next week uh, here for um, uh, drinking champagne. Uh, we'll yeah, <laughs> going up and down uh, on the wrong lead.com at wrong underscore lead. Andrew is at Andrew Champagne. I'm at Cherry Drank, and we will catch you guys later.